blessed and pleasant good afternoon and a happy and blessed Easter to you. Welcome to Children's Bible Minutes brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Graffi Muki and I are excited to be with you this wonderful Easter Sunday afternoon. We missed you on Good Friday. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to look at the crucifixion on Good Friday and time just got away with us. We went to our three hour service and we could not broadcast anything on Friday, but we hope you had a wonderful Good Friday and that you understood that the crucifixion of Jesus was done out of love for you. Yes, yes, yes. Today we are looking at the fact that even though Jesus died on Friday, was crucified, he did not stay dead. No, sir, no, sir, no, sir. Friday was the first day, Saturday was the second day, today is the third day, and on the third day he rose again. He came back to life. And so today we will be looking at John chapter 20, verse 1 through to 18, which is all about seeing the risen Savior. Mm -hmm. But before we get into the resurrection and who saw him first, let's listen to this one. This one is entitled, Rejoice in the Lord Always, and it's from Go Kids Asia. Let's have a listen. To God be the glory indeed, and we are rejoicing because God's not dead. No, he is alive. Jesus is alive, and well, the grave could not hold him. He is risen. Hallelujah. I've been waiting 40 days to say hallelujah. You realize that? Mm -hmm. I've, been <laughs> I've been waiting 40 days to say hallelujah. We are going to be talking today about the resurrection of our God. Well, of Jesus, who is our God, of course. And we will be looking at John chapter 20, verses 1 through to 18, which is the story of the resurrection, which tells us all about the women meeting the angels at the tomb after Jesus was resurrected. And what we're going to do is we're going to listen to this contemporary English version of this Bible reading, read for us by Mr. Douglas Brown. And it's all about seeing the risen Christ. Let's listen to our Bible reading for today. Seeing the risen Christ. On Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran to Simon Peter and to Jesus' favourite disciple and said, They've taken the Lord from the tomb! We don't know where they've put him! Peter and the other disciple set off for the tomb. They ran side by side until the other disciple ran faster than Peter and got there first. He bent over and saw the strips of linen cloth lying inside the tomb, but he did not go in. When Simon Peter got there, he went into the tomb and saw the strips of cloth. He also saw the piece of cloth that had been used to cover Jesus' face. It was rolled up and in a place by itself. The disciple who got there first then went into the tomb, and when he saw it, he believed. At that time, Peter and the other disciple didn't know that the scriptures said that Jesus would rise to life. So the two of them went back to the other disciples. Mary Magdalene stood crying outside the tomb. She was still weeping when she stooped down and saw two angels inside. They were dressed in white and were sitting where Jesus' body had been. One was at the head and the other was at the foot. The angels asked Mary, Why are you crying? She answered, 
They've taken away my lord's body. I don't know where they have put him. As soon as Mary said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know who he was. Jesus asked her, Why are you crying? Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener and said, Sir, if you have taken his body away, please tell me so I can go and get him. Then Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni! The Aramaic word Rabboni means teacher. Jesus told her, Don't hold on to me. I have not yet gone to the Father. But tell my disciples that I am going to the one who is my Father and my God, as well as your Father and your God. Mary Magdalene then went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord. She also told them what he had said to her. The disciples were afraid of the Jewish leaders, and on the evening of the same Sunday they locked themselves in a room. Suddenly Jesus appeared in the middle of the group. He greeted them and showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they became very happy. After Jesus had greeted them again, he said, I am sending you just as the Father has sent me. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they will be forgiven. But if you don't forgive their sins, they will not be forgiven. What an interesting portion of reading. And there you see that the first persons that saw the risen Savior were the women, Mary specifically. Not Mary, his mother, but Mary, who we believe is Mary Magdalene. And she went to tell the disciples and when she got there and told them his body is not here, uh, they took his body. The fellows, of course, ran to the temple because they wanted to make sure that, you know what, things were as the women said. And maybe it's not that they didn't believe the women in as much as they just wanted to see for themselves. Sometimes we want to see for ourselves to ensure that what we hear or what we think we know is exactly what we know. And when they got there, they found it empty, of course. Yes, and Mary then will have an encounter where she meets Jesus. And of course, she doesn't recognize him until Jesus calls her name. And that's the thing. We have to be looking out and listening for the voice of the risen Savior in our ear to call us to him, to guide us and to tell us what we need to do. But can you imagine the sadness they felt at his death and then now the joy they are feeling knowing that he is alive again? Oh man, let me tell you. Let's listen to our second song. This one is called Alive, Alive, and it's from Go Kids Asia. And of course, we're singing it because Jesus is alive. He did not stay dead. Hallelujah. Let's listen to this one.
We want to thank Go Kids Asia for the use of that one. And Jesus is alive and we are happy that he is alive. Can you imagine how different the story would have been if Jesus stayed dead? Of course, if Jesus stayed there, the disciples would be sad. We would not have the victory of the resurrection. We would not know that we have new life to rise to life again. Because Jesus raising from the dead means that we have the opportunity, if we believe in him, to not stay dead, but to live in life eternally with him. Exactly. That's the beauty of the resurrection. And to tell us more about Jesus' resurrection, we called in on an expert. Mm -hmm. At least Muki says he's an expert because he's his friend. Douglas, he's is here from Douglas Talks and Douglas is going to tell us all about Jesus's resurrection. Let's have a listen. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and I've got another puppet show for you guys today. Yeah, yeah, my last puppet show is about how Jesus, you know, he came to the earth and, and he paid the ultimate sacrifice for us, you know, which is great and amazing and wonderful, but it, it's also, it's also sad. You know, it's amazing because it showed how much God loves us, but but it's sad because because Jesus had to die to take the punishment that we deserve. But but the rest of the story is not sad at all. Yeah, it, in fact, it's pretty awesome. This puppet show is the true story of what Jesus is doing right now. So so let's go ahead and let's start the show. Okay. So to catch you up on our last story, God sent his one and only son, Jesus, to die for our sins. Because the penalty for sin is death. And we've all sinned. We've all done bad things. Every single one of us. Except for Jesus. And God wants to be with us, so he sent his son to pay the penalty for our sins. Jesus came and he lived a perfect life. But he took the punishment that we deserved. So we could be with God. And you see, after Jesus died, they took his body and they put it into what's called a tomb. And a tomb is like a cave. And they took his body and they wrapped it up and they took a big stone and they rolled the stone in front of the tomb after they put the body in. And, and Jesus' body was there for three days. And on the third day, something incredible happened. You see, Jesus is God's son. And not even death could hold him down. And so on the third day, the stone rolled away and the tomb was empty. Jesus was no longer in the tomb. Jesus was no longer dead. He was alive. He was back. But, you know, see, the disciples, Jesus' best friends, they didn't know that Jesus was coming back from the dead, even though Jesus told them he would. The disciples were all just very sad and you know that he had died. And they, they hold themselves up in this room and they were just really mopey, you know, all sad for themselves that Jesus had died. And and people even came to them and they said, hey guys, we saw Jesus walking around. He's alive. And they said, no, that's impossible. Jesus isn't alive. He died. He died a horrible death. We saw it ourselves. But then, even in this locked room, Jesus appeared out of nowhere. And at first they were afraid, but but when they realized it was him, they were so excited. They saw him, and he went to them, and he said, Do not be afraid. It's really me. It's not just a ghost. You can feel the holes in my hands from where I was nailed to the cross. And the disciples finally understood that he was really telling the truth when he said that he would, that he would have to die, but that he would rise again from the dead. Now, the disciples weren't the only people that Jesus appeared to. You see, beyond the twelve disciples, Jesus' very best friends, he had thousands of followers. And he went out and he appeared to them. And, and after he had spoken to them for a while and been with them for a while, he told them that he was leaving to go prepare a place for them. And after he had said these things, Jesus went up into heaven. He floated up in the sky and was gone. And right now, Jesus is up in heaven, making everything ready for us. The Bible says that the only way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. And if we accept Jesus as our Savior, then we'll go to heaven after we die. But the Bible also says that someday Jesus is coming back to earth and he's going to take everyone who follows him up to heaven with him right then and there to live with him in that beautiful place forever and ever. Isn't that awesome? 
Jesus died for our sins, but he's alive again. And he's, he's alive right now, making things ready for us. And if we give our hearts to Jesus, then we can have eternal life with him in heaven. This story is what we celebrate on Easter. You know, Jesus rising from the dead after paying for our sins. And, and Jesus coming back to life was, was proof that A, not even death could beat him, and B, he really can give us eternal life as well if we put our faith and our trust in him. If, if you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior so that you can live forever with him in heaven, uh, ask, ask your parents or, or your pastor or, or your Sunday school teacher um, how you can do that, and I'm sure that they would love they would love to help. And I, sh I sure hope that you'll accept God's free gift to you in His Son, Jesus. Bye, guys! Wow! Thank you so much, Douglas. Thank you so much for that. And of course, and of course... That is exactly what the resurrection is about. Jesus did not stay dead. And because he came back from the dead, because he had victory over the death and the grave, then we know that if we believe in him, we could have that same kind of victory. What does John 3.16 tell us? Let me hear what John 3.16 tells us. It says, if God so loved the world, because God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And that's the question. Do you believe that Jesus died for you? Do you believe that Jesus rose again from the dead? If you believe that these things are true, it means that you have an opportunity to take part in the eternal life that Jesus has won for all of us. And that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And guess what? If you believe and you are ready to commit yourself to Jesus, you just have to let your mom, your dad, or your priest know, your Sunday school teacher, somebody, let them know, you know what? I do believe that Christ died for me. I do believe that he rose again from the dead. And I believe that, you know what? I can have eternal life in him. And let me tell you, saying that you believe, saying that you want to be a follower of Christ, it means that certain things in your life are going to change, but not change in a bad way. It means that you're going to try to make the right decisions to please God. It means that you're going to try to live with the love that God loves all of us with. That you're going to try to be kind to everyone, no matter who they are or where they come from. Saying that you believe in Jesus Christ, saying that you believe he died for your sins, that is an awesome thing to say because it means that you want to be in a good relationship with Jesus Christ and with God through Jesus Christ. And guess what? We took the time to come to that belief some time ago. Well, some of us longer than some people, but we're not going to call any names, right, Muki? But at any point in time that you feel that this is what you want to do, never be afraid to do it. Always be willing. And you know what? Again, talk to mommy and daddy. Talk to your pastor. Talk to your priest. Talk to your friend. Talk to somebody that will be able to guide you into strengthening this relationship. And know when you accept and when you admit that you believe, it doesn't mean that things are going to magically fix in your life. Mm -mm. It means that you will have more faith and more trust in God in order to face whatever your life brings. But that's the power of the cross. And it means that we are accepting that even if death and even if the grave couldn't hold down Jesus, it means that there's nothing in this world, boys and girls, that is bigger than him, that could challenge him. And if he's on our side, then guess which team we are on? The winning team, right, guys? Exactly. That's the beauty of the resurrection. Knowing that Jesus died, yes, but that he rose again. That he is victorious over all things. That he loves us. That he took on the sacrifice of dying for us in love. And because he is risen again, we get to be with him in love. You know what? Let us pray. Good afternoon, God. God, the story of the resurrection is such a beautiful one. God, we were kind of sad when we looked at the death of your son on Good Friday. We know that it was a sad day for the disciples. It was a sad day for the world, especially for those who thought that he would never come back. For those who didn't pay attention to when he said that in three days, he would be here again. God, can we can only imagine. We can only imagine the excitement of the disciples and the women when they first found out that Jesus is alive. 
God, they were able to see him. They were able to see the holes in his hands and his side. They couldn't touch him because they, he told them not to. But God, they could see him and they could feel his presence. And God, that's the same presence that we feel in our life. That's the same presence that help us, helps us to know that while we might not be able to see the physical Jesus, we can see him in each other and we can feel your love and his love for us in our hearts. God, when we do right by you and when we do good for the others around us, God, we feel your presence. We feel the presence of your spirit. Spirit, and it is this presence, God, that draws our heart close to you. And God, we are thankful that you are alive and that you are still moving in and through your people. God, help us to remember that because Jesus overcame the power of sin and death, we have new freedom and new life. Help us to remember that because he is alive, even after being dead, we too can be alive in him after we die. That the gift of eternal life is ours if we simply believe that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. That he died for our sins, but that the grave could not keep him down. God, this is our faith. And we thank you for the opportunity to share our faith with everyone we come in contact with. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your promise of eternal life to those who believe. Keep our hearts and our minds fixed on you, Lord God, in all things. We lift our prayers to you, to the name of your most precious son, who is alive and reigns with you forever and ever. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, boys and girls, sadly, that's all the time we have for today on Children's Bible Minute. But hallelujah, Jesus is alive. He is alive indeed. And we are excited that the grave couldn't hold him, that we have an opportunity at everlasting life because he is alive. Don't forget to tell somebody today that Jesus is alive and that we get to have eternal life because he lives. Indeed, indeed. The question is, will you believe in Jesus? We look forward to seeing you. We won't be seeing you on Monday, but we look forward to seeing you on Wednesday for another edition of Children's Bible Minutes. Please, we know it's a long weekend. Do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. You could still wear your mask. Don't forget to wash your hands and practice your social distancing as much as you can. Above all else, do not forget that God loves you. And we do too. We close off with this one. Will you believe from Go Kids Asia? Until next time, bye for now. Jesus died, twas for your sin and mine, for us Christ was crucified. He gave his earthly life, so God may save mankind, this world needs Jesus Will you?